the complete solution for quasi-crystals, was accepted by the APS March meeting that was cancelled because of the COVID of virus. The greater the prize, the worse the goof. Shetman claimed long-range order with no translational symmetry. Doomed, the translational symmetry is strictly hierarchic. This timeline shows why I have to step lightly over the detail that is described in 10 general articles, 4 monographs, 3 APS March meetings and elsewhere. The discovery was made in 1982, published in 1984, before my higher hierarchic icosahedral solution in 1986. After 20 years in the doldrums, Seneca gave a paper to the American Mathematical Society. What is a quasi-crystal? It began, the short answer is nobody knows she was mistaken. I have discovered hierarchic structure factors and a metric, and today I will give it to you, measured, analysed, verified and complete. The first thing you have to understand is that there is no Bragg diffraction. I will illustrate this in the following slides. In Bragg's law, the order n is integral and harmonic, like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this instance, odd orders are suppressed by the structure factors. But in the quasi-crystal, n equals 0, 1, tor, tor squared, tor cube, tor to the fourth, it is in geometric series, not integral, and it's irrational. How can it be harmonic? I'm going to be able to show you that. N is diametrically opposed to Bragg diffraction. And what about D? The interplanar spacing is unique for any Bragg condition and periodically repeating. In the quasi-crystal, there are multiple Ds jumbled higgledy-piggledy. They are diametrically opposed to Bragg diffraction. But what do we know? These white spots in phase contrast optimum D focus map manganese because of its high atomic number and scattering factor. And here you see 10 unit cells in a circle. Actually, two sets of five icosahedrally coordinated like the diffraction map. And remember that the icosahedron has six rotational axes with five-fold symmetry, where the whole of crystallography has none. Here they are, one, two, three, four, five. And in the center, six. You're looking at a hierarchy of icosahedral structures. Four tiers deep, one, two, three, four, and infinitely extensible. And the second tier is extremely dense, it's edge sharing, so the stoichiometry is aluminium 6 manganese, like the original melt. And notice that the unit edge width of the unit icosahedral unit cell stretches to tor squared in the icosahedral cluster and in the supercluster tor to the power of 4, as you saw it in the micrograph. This is logarithmically periodic with period tor squared. We know the structure, so we can calculate the diffraction path. But first we must correct the indexation. Here's a stereogram of the principal axes and principal diffraction planes. Here are the axes and here are the diffraction planes. They are three-dimensional in geometric series, simple and complete. Dimensions should not be multiplied without necessity. Mathematicians are dreamers. Where are the atoms? Every atom in the micrograph was measured, specified in location, catered for size. And here are the centers. The quasi-structure factor is derived from the structure factor in crystals in the following way. In the crystals, each atom is projected onto a selected plane normal and phase cosine sum to give the amplitude for the corresponding Bragg beam. In the quasi-crystal, we make two adjustments. Firstly, because we have sharp diffraction but multiple d-spacings, we include a coherence factor. 
we can derive this precisely as we go along. Secondly, because our unit cell is not periodically repeating, we have to sum over the whole crystal, not just the unit cell. And to do this, we need an iterative procedure and the stretching factor. And what's the result? There is no Bragg diffraction. If there were Bragg diffraction, it would occur on the augment axis where CS equals 1. But scanning CS, the quasi Bragg peaks pop up at the quasi Bragg condition, illustrated here on the four beams that we started with and uh, occurring at a divergence from the Bragg condition. The divergence is equal to the metric 0.894. It's the same not only for these peaks, but for all the beams on Shetman's data. It's a universal number. So what do we do when we scan CS? We know, first of all, that there is no Bragg diffraction. We know nothing about the relations between D, N, D and theta. We know nothing a priori. We know that when you rotate a crystal, illuminated by an X-ray beam, the Bragg diffraction switch on and off suddenly at the Bragg condition. And we know also that the QSF is independent of theta. So what are those peaks that we plotted? CS is a breathing strain that switches the Bragg coherence on and off. And we'll see how that works out in one dimension in a moment. We verified also that N, uh, using the corrected indexation, we verified that N is geometric, both by in the diffraction and in the stereogram. With calculated CS, we will be able to verify D and theta S and the quasi Bragg law, and this will verify the model and the diffraction. So that's where we're headed. Let's consider diffraction. Bragg diffraction is biplanar, look at the red lines. The difference in path length between the two red lines is equal to the wavelength of the light. That's physics 101. The quasi crystal is multiplanar. To know how the phases add, you have to calculate the quasi structure factor. But you can get more inf information from the quasi block wave. What is the block wave? It's the lattice image in the two beam condition. It's caused by the interference between an incident beam and the Bragg reflected beam. Uh, and uh, these two pseudo Bragg block waves are commensurate at the unit cell, but not at the cluster and higher orders. What we have to do is to stretch the axis by the inverse of the metric, and then we get an approximate uh, commensuration both at the unit cell, the cluster, and all higher orders. How does that happen? It happens on the principal planes as follows. Each dimension of the golden triad has three principal planes, and the golden triad scale as the unit cell, the cluster, the supercluster, and higher orders. And the interplanar spacings vary as 0, 1, tor, tor squared, tor cubed, tor to four, tor to the fifth. So now you know how that geometric series diffraction originates. Bragg diffraction is coherent scattering from Bragg planes. Hierarchic diffraction is coherent scattering from subclass to centers. We can illustrate that numerically. Here's the geometric series. It's irrational, except for the first two terms. And here's the Fibonacci equivalent. It has a rational part and an irrational part. We can rationalize it by substituting for tor the rational ratio three halves and get a rational series. When you calculate the QSF, the quasi-structure factor, for this rational series, you find it's Bragg-like with CS uh, equals one. And that tells you that the metric is due to the irrational part of the uh, irrational series. Subtract the rational part, normalize it, and invert it, and you've got the metric. It's the same 
for all terms in the geometric series. You can derive this in several ways. One of them is given at the bottom. And notice also that CS is extremely precise in sufficiently large crystals. And the metric function is given here for the first time. It consists in a rational subtraction from the rational index and inverted. We can sum up. What we have is a sine wave scattering off a hierarchic structure into an irrational geometric series and the metric harmonizes the three spaces. The quasi-structure factor gives us CS and A. Indeed, A is the lattice parameter we'll come back to. And the quasi-block wave gives us theta. Here is A. It's the lattice parameter measured uh, in the early days by several of us. And uh, it was measured by assuming Bragg's law because we had nothing else at the time. But it's now corrected with a metric and the index. And the output is a number that is equal to the diameter of aluminum and equal to the edge width of the unit cell. Measured, analyzed, verified, and complete. I need to put this in context. The sub-editor actor Chris wrote, you don't measure the lattice parameter, you just have to choose dh. This is a category error. Mathematicians choose their axioms. Physicists falsify them. He went on to write, Bragg's equation cannot be applied if we do not know how to handle the term dh. What well, he doesn't know. He chooses A falsely, and Bragg's law never applies. His is rank one mainstream quasi-physics. What else is quasi? Scientists have to know what they do. Is most third millennial physics quasi? There are rules in physics. You neglected its foundations, they liquefied. What you're left with is myth. I've given lots of examples elsewhere. But I'll give you now a, a, a souvenir. Is there long range order? Yes, of course. That's evident in the uh, diffraction. And is there no translational symmetry? On the contrary, hierarchic block waves are invariant under translations a tor to the m. Look at the red waves. The blue waves are incoherent. And welcome hierarchic icosahedra into a new world of physics.